Friday already, Friday again, and one of my favorite days of the year. It's October 29th. It's the Halloween episode of Drama, and hey, welcome to Pi Day Friday Dramas. <laughs> I know, I love Halloween. <laughs> it, it's not Christmas, it's not Thanksgiving, that's a little more family oriented, but man, I just have a ton of fun when it comes to Halloween. Oh, <laughs> very nice back channel. All right, let me get rid of this thing. It's a lovely start, but I cannot do the whole show <laughs> wearing that as much fun as it would be. That's not going to be my contest costume for, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, for the show after the show when we get together for a, a uh, party. Oh my goodness, I look like a static monster. <laughs> hey everybody it is friday it's october 29th it's the uh, this weekend is halloween celebrated in many parts of the world and uh, particularly here i set up normally just a gigundous gigantic halloween setup i didn't last year i didn't this year we're still too locky downy we're not going to get much traffic so that and the the costume that i'm going to put on <clears throat> for the discord show is going to be it for me this year it's too bad Hey, so I am David Rush. I'm the senior instructor at Total Seminars. This is Drama, Dave Rush, Ask Me Anything, and Scott, who is invisible, but he's here. I see him writing already and, and on back channel and on the front channel and everything. Uh, so we'll just, uh, we got a short show today. I'm going to get through some of this stuff real quickly. I'm the senior instructor over at, uh, over at Total Seminars. I can say that because I was there yesterday. I killed the day there doing stuff that had to be done in person. I'm back at the uh, working remote again right now. I'll tell you what, uh, I love going to the office when everybody's there, when I'm, I'm going there alone and just working. I'm very productive, but there's nobody to talk to. There's nobody to pass in the halls. And my commute is just abysmal. My best case commute for me, if, if there's zero traffic, is an hour and five minutes. Uh, worst case is three hours if there's accidents and things like that. And yet, Usually, it's give or take an hour 15. Yesterday, two hours, five minutes to get back. Ugh. So I don't miss that at all. I love, uh, how long does it take me to get from the upstairs bedroom down here to the office? A minute, maybe? Not even? So I like that part. Hey, so I am the senior instructor at Total Seminars. I do stand-up training. I uh, help write courses, and uh, so does Scott, and so do a number of other people. I'm, I guess I'm the senior instructor, and when I'm not doing that, I do uh, the Raspberry Pi show, Pi Day, in which we talk about how to use Raspberry Pis to further our studies in CompTIA certifications and any other technology that suits you. I am joined in spirit and on keyboard by the Total Seminars Chief Editor, Editor-in-Chief, Scott Jernigan, author, editor, raconteur, and uh, I have seen him just do an excellent job of landscaping. So let's not put that out. Who put the big smiley on the back channel on you? Oh, okay. Uh, also working the back channel is Andrew Hutz, a former denizen of Mike's AMAs and my AMAs and Discord, and uh, now an employee of, or a, a worker, I don't know what term we use. Anyways, he works for Total Seminars. And he works the back channel and the front channel. He'll be commenting, answering questions, uh, wielding his band hammer. Should that be needed? I don't think that's going to be needed. <clears throat> so we only got nine people going in so far. So I still will vamp for a little bit and see what all is going on. All right. So feel free to contact Scott. Uh, talk to him on the back channel. Talk to me. Talk to Andrew. Uh, if you uh, would like to get in touch with us offline for any reason. Yeah, I had that already, Not Hey, AMA contact information. That's how we do that. You can do so by email. You'll find me. I work for Total Seminars, there, and my name is Dave R. So I am Dave R. at TotalSem.com. Scott Jernigan. Scott J. works for Total Seminars. Scott J. at TotalSem.com. Uh, I guess I better put Andrew's information up here, but he's Andrew Hutt. So Andrew H. at Total Seminars. You can also get in touch with me by my personal email, drushtx. And if you need these other pieces of information to contact us, they're at your disposal. Just pause your playback right now and write down what you need or take a screenshot or something like that. Okay, that takes care of that. So that's what we're going to 
hustle things along right now. I'm not going to read every single thing that we've got to do. <clears throat> uh, reading my notes just so I can this. If you're tracking, this is episode number 65 of Dramas, Drama. And I guess we got to start thinking about episode number 100. We did something uh, nice for Mike's. So we're going to try and do something nice here. We do have a great day here. I got a nice, uh, fun, short program to talk about uh, in about 40 minutes or so, give or take. And we're going to give away a CompTIA voucher. A uh, couple minor changes to the program, nothing negative. Uh, the administrative side of things are forming and, and changing a little bit. And a couple of you who are on here who have won before, I'm going to need some more information from you. They're they, they've changed the the type and quantity of information that they need. Uh, and I've got to chase down some people who won on Mike's AMA, get the info from you. But uh, Andre, uh, let's talk after Discord. I need uh, one or two things from you. What else here? This is a Total Seminars presentation. Mike Myers himself does two presentations on this very channel at this very time every week, Monday and Wednesday. I pick up the slack <laughs> every Friday, two o'clock central time on this channel. We talk about CompTIA stuff. We talk about Raspberry Pi stuff. We give away stuff and we talk about all kinds of things that are in the technological news. I, of course, particularly focus around the Raspberry Pi world, but there's more. Slide that up there. Hey, there was 13 paragraphs. Did that, did that. We've got specials. Oh, we still have specials. I'm loving this, that, that they've come back. Uh, we're doing, uh, remember, these specials are only for the people who watch Drama and Mike's AMA. We don't advertise these anywhere else. So take advantage of this stuff. There's nobody else getting this stuff unless you've seen this or, you know, heard it from a friend. Uh, so we're doing, and I guess I'll throw the slide up real quick. I can do that. AMA Weekly Special. That looks like it'll turn up. I like that. What are you doing? Oh, okay. <clears throat> so the special this week are bundles. Bundles are comprised of an ebook and a practice test associated with that topic. Thank you. Uh, Scott has posted the same information on the YouTube chat at seven minutes past the hour. And so we've got total tester bundles for A+, Net+, Security+, Cybersecurity Analyst Plus, Pen Test Plus. Hey, he's not here, but uh, those of you who know uh, Zach, uh, Zach just uh, posted on an, another forum that he passed Pen Test Plus. So even though he's not here, he's going to watch this probably on the archive. Kudos to you, Big Zach. Congratulations. And one more bundle we got the AWS uh, Systems Architecture Associate, whatever that is. Uh, the code, you should go to Total Seminars, totalsem.com load up on your loot make sure you get the two pieces here i don't think they're they're together as a bundle so you got to put in uh for instance a net plus ebook and a net plus total tester and then when you check out use the code pablo <laughs> i don't know where uh the people who generate this stuff come up with their codes every week uh pablo escobar's uh hippopotamuses were in the news this week and i've I, that's the direction I assume that it came from, but who knows? They, they may just have a friend named Pablo, or maybe we hired somebody new named Pablo. At any rate, go to totalsem.com, load up with loot, put Pablo in when you check out. You will get 50% off of those two items together. This offer is good through October 24th. That's this Sunday. I don't know what time, and I'm not going to look it up because it probably changes. But what's important is don't wait till Sunday. Do it today. Do it tomorrow that's saturday and then you don't have to panic oh my gosh i'm gonna miss the special goodness okay we almost done there yeah reading my notes here so we do projects here every week oftentimes they are exclusively functional on raspberry pi many times they are available for other linux distros such is the case with today. We're going to use Raspberry Pi and Raspberry Pi OS to demonstrate today's project. However, if you haven't got yours yet, you can just use any Linux distro that you have access to. Install a virtual machine, put one on that old dead computer. Uh, you can use Ubuntu or Mint or 
Manjaro, if you're into building your own or some other arch flavored or whatever makes you happy. Rocky, I'm, you know, I'm loving Rocky these days. I can't wait to get back to that. Uh, most of the things that we're going to do today would work absolutely perfectly on all those things. I've got the uh, Pi R Square server up and running. All of my notes, all of my PDFs and my pictures and everything uh, that I use to do this show on a weekly basis is available as a downloaded set, a downloadable set of archives. Guys, back channel, if you would please post the link to Pi R Square. It is pi r square, P I R S Q U A R E, at zapto, Z A P T O dot org. And just go to the download link. And you can download all of my notes from here and might be useful for this one, for all the, the kind of things that I'm going to show you. I got a ton of stuff to show you. Uh, 31 flavors of things to show you today. And most of them can be done and followed along in real time, but there's a couple of them that require some software installs. They're very quick, a minute, two minutes. The worst case one might be five. Thank you. Pi R Square linked, posted by Senior Scott at 10 minutes past the hour. My hour is two o'clock right now. So <clears throat> enjoy that link. It will be open until at least midnight my time tonight. Uh, I got brave. This is the first time I've had the thing open for two solid days. I opened it up yesterday afternoon because I got the show all prepped way in advance for a change. What are we doing today? I'm glad you asked that. Well, last week, we installed RetroPie. Yay! Uh, it was the, the, the hardware and the software installation. The problem with RetroPie uh, as an installation is, cool, I've got it installed. Now I want to play a game. Oh, there's no games on it. So we're going to take care of that next week. And, you know, as, as I read and I researched and I studied uh, in the beginning days, I thought, oh, my gosh, this is going to be hard. How do we teach this? And then once uh, I found an, an experiment with all kinds of sources, I created a very simple two or three step process. And it is just lickety split, easy to do in the uh, the precious little off time that I have around here. Uh, the first game that I installed was Miss Pac-Man. And <laughs> I am just having too much fun with that i'm going to visit the kid at uh in, in college in on november 13th whatever and uh i gave him a raspberry pi 4 he's an engineering student and he's used it and he's played with it he has not yet played with retro pi i picked up a, a shiny controller for him i made a, a micro sd card for him and loaded it with games and uh, i wrote a little page for him to get his own games and add more so the kid is just a stress monster. He's worse than me. He's working and studying 20 hours a day. He gets no sleep. And then he wakes up sick as a dog and <laughs> nervous as all get out. It's like, dude, drop a class. Take a break. You're not, <laughs> you don't owe anybody anything. So what a lovely gift RetroPie makes. Oh my gosh. If you're looking to give, you know, something to that nephew, that niece, that brother-in-law, whatever, not too expensive, ton of fun. And you will, they will be quiet and for months. And as they focus on that, what a great gift to create. So we'll talk about that. We'll finish that up next week. What are we doing today? We are doing performance monitoring in Linux systems. Now, performance monitoring and performance measuring can be done uh, with a simple command. I just want to know this little factoid about my computer. It can be done with multiple commands. It can be done with menu-oriented things. Uh, I'm going to show you 31, give or take, uh, different utilities. A lot of them overlap. This one shows this and this and this, while this one shows that and that and, oh, this too. So we'll, we'll keep them short. Yeah, there's 31 of them. I'm going to spend less than a minute on each one. Some of them I'm going to spend uh, 10 seconds on, 20 seconds, something like that. Uh, one or two of them that are really interesting or are very involved. I'll show you a little more of that. Uh, the whole thing's going to chew up about 30 minutes in total. Let me do nah. Let's go see who's here and 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 end. Answer questions and do greetings and go find the right page here. There's the where's everybody page. All right, let's see what's going on. I punched in early. I was the first one today, and I liked my own stream because it's not my stream, it's Mike's stream. I'm just using it. So when I like it, I'm not liking me. I'm 
uh, helping Mike out. And we would appreciate that if you would uh, like the stream, uh, not because it helps us, of course, but because it helps other people find uh, these things. They look for Raspberry Pi or Mike Myers or whatever uh, in, in UTurb. UTurb? <laughs> And that brings us up as you know, first contacts. And we think our information is the best. All right, so my greetings. It's October, I've covered all my stuff here. Uh, we're going to get together after the show today. It's a short show uh, on the unofficial total Discord channel for a costume party contest. Turn up with cameras, turn up with microphones. You're gonna come in, I'm gonna take a screenshot of you. Uh, and then I'm going to make a big pile of them for about an hour. And then at the end of the hour, I'm going to announce three winners. Uh, first place is first prize is a Raspberry Pi kit. Awesome. A couple other cool prizes for second and third as well. Uh, if we can't ship a Raspberry Pi to you because of where you are and, and where Amazon is, we'll find something of equivalent value. But uh, the plan, most of the people that I know of are, are in places that we can do this. So should be fun. Winner must be present to win. That's going to be at uh, 4.45 my time. I've got that posted down here in uh, UTC somewhere. Let me see my notes here. Right quick, Discord link, 3.45. Eh, it's somewhere. Anyway, 3.45 central time is when we start. 4.45 central time is when we're going to finish up and announce winners. The Discord link, I have posted it at 150. I posted it in my very own self. You got to have a Discord account. So if you haven't done that, do that now. You'll take a break from the show, go over to Discord and get yourself an account, and then use this link to join the total seminar, the unofficial total seminar server set up and operated by Jose Braden, our good friend, and his minions, who are his moderators. Man, good server over there. I, I cannot extol its virtues enough. And I usually spend two minutes doing so. I'm clicking along today. So turn up. You'll see what's there. You'll love it. It's great. Matt, uh, let's see. Okay, first real check-in then. Steady as shark. Hey, hey, good to see you again. Ah, you're here. And for the right reason, man. How are we doing here on body counts? It's, it's usually pretty short at the beginning. I have so many different <laughs> screens open. 12. Uh, and me and Scott and Andrew are among them. That means there's nine potential contestants. Discord links also posted by Scott at 217. Thank you, sir, Scott. Are you guys talking to Scott? Talk to Scott, man. Because he has nothing else to do. That's why he's not on here, because he is so bored. He just sits there and watches the YouTube chat. <laughs> that may or may not be true. So anyways, your odds are very good right now uh, of winning the CompTIA voucher, which we're going to do toward the end of the show. Matthew Patrick is here. Good evening, all. I forget where you're at, Matrick, uh, Matrick, Matthew. You're England, I'm thinking, that uh, it's evening for you, but I may be wrong. Andre de Goyer, hey there, everybody. Ready for another drama? And see, now your odds are really good because Andre is here and he can't play because he's already won a voucher. So, hey, now your odds. Oh, somebody just joined. You get the idea. Once costume, <laughs> once costume. Yeah, I think I used that mask last year, but I'm not sure. I have a different mask. I have a, a, a thing that I wear at some point every year uh, for Halloween, maybe not for the show or whatever. But, and so I headed from my closet this morning and where the heck is it? Where, where, eh, oh, and tore that apart and called the, the missus. She's out of town. Hey, you know where my thing is? Uh, did you check here? No, but I have an idea now. Uh, she asked me to, to check the kid's bedroom and it wasn't there. And I thought, I know where it is. It's at Texas Tech right now because it's such a cool costume. So, yeah. Uh, thank you for the nice costume. Enjoyed that. Siegfried is here. Hey, Dave, good news. I get to bring my Raspberry Pi with me to the office to use Kali Linux for information gathering purposes starting next Tuesday. Wow. That is super cool and a half. Siegfried, I love that. I, I, I beyond love that. That's awesome. Can't wait to hear stories. Document your experiences to the, the level that your company will allow you to do that. Uh, send it to me for curiosity or better yet, start that blog. People will eat that up. I know I will. Love that. Long commute sucks, says uh, Steady Shark. 
I'm glad that remote working is on the uptake. Absolutely. But like I said, I miss it. You know, Scott's got a uh, an office across from me. And sometimes, you know, I'm just brain stuck or just need a brain break. And so I can meander across the hall and pester him. Hey, stop working. I need to talk. And we can talk about Dune. Uh, while I was in the office, uh, an old friend of ours, a former employee of ours, came into the office. It was one of the reasons I went into the office is because he wanted to borrow some Halloween equipment. So I took it down to the, the thing. He turned up yesterday and asked him, you know, what he's been up to. And he said, hey, I saw Dune last night. Yay, the first person I can talk to in person about Dune because I've been keeping my mouth shut to avoid spoilers and it's just been chewing me up inside. So, uh, Scott, I think, you know, uh, we had Ford in, popped in yesterday and uh, I had a nice chat. All right, reading along, reading more. Andrew Hutt says, happy Halloween. That's me, says Scott. It is. Andre, uh, uh, Andrew Hutt's killed his chances on winning anything by joining the workforce at Total Sam. <laughs> I, as soon as I read the first couple of words, I, I, I knew where you were going with that. That's exactly right. Sorry, dude. You, you can't win a Raz Pi from us. You can't win a voucher from us. <laughs> but he's making money that he wasn't making before. So set a little aside and you can have those things. Catherine, hello yourself. Awesome set today. Thank you. Love decorating for Halloween. I was up at the middle of the night the other night working on a project for you guys or for the company. I don't remember what. And I, I hit a pause point. I, I had to let the computer do its thing for a while. So I headed over to my tub o goodies and I just kicked the camera, sorry. And started setting up a set and took about two days. But I love playing with this kind of stuff. One year, four weeks, and still going strong. You're tracking. Yeah, okay. Yeah, right. If you're 65 episodes, then yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Andrew has won the biggest prize of all, working with us. Or is that a punishment? Is, is there some divine intervention that says, you've had too good of a life. You're going to work for total seminars now. <laughs> now, great place to work. As you know, I've been here 10 years plus, maybe 11. I can't track anymore. <clears throat> so I joined in 11, so... It's been over 10. Carla Rain is here. Applause right back at you. <clears throat> okay, Scott posted AMA specials at 207. Hacker Zach. Yeah, absolutely. He's not here. He said he wasn't going to be able to make it. He's killing time with family. Why would you kill time with family when you could be here instead and join <laughs> your other family? Steady Shark. What am I drinking? All right, I have the answer for that. It is iced tea. Uh, but let me add to it. So it's, it's the usual stuff that you know, ice and tea and lemon and a sweetener, which puts me on my 22nd rant. I shouldn't talk about this because I'm trying to do a speedy show, but I must. So I, I, I have changed my eating habits. If you want to call it keto diet, fine. I'm, I'm ketoing. So is the missus. Uh, and we, have been doing this now for two months, two and a half, something like that. It's working. I'm losing. I'm heading down. Uh, I peaked uh, around uh, the be be before lockdown. I, I hesitate to tell you the number, uh, but okay, I I'll tell you what the hell. Uh, I was banging near 280 and about a year into lockdown without doing anything special. Uh, I was down to, to 240. I shook off 40 pounds in about a year. But it wasn't running, but I plateaued there. I was stuck. I said, well, okay, I got to do more exercise and I uh, got to work out and uh, try a, a, a diet habit. So, okay, well, let's play the keto thing because it's supposed to be good for fairly rapid loss. And, and I'm targeting uh, my college weight. I want to bang on around 180. So I have learned two things about the keto diet. First of all, it works. Okay. You are going to lose. Uh, if you follow it and that's it. I mean, there's, you can't cheat. You can't cheat in the least bit. It'll throw your body out of ketosis and, uh, and then it just becomes a fat meat cheese diet, bad thing. And then you are also going to lose because everything that is keto friendly, especially if it's advertised or marketed keto friendly is four times more expensive than the equivalent. So I have keto friendly sweetener in here that, uh, I don't know, probably runs a buck a packet or some insane number like that. Yeah, it's delicious. And it ain't cheating, but so you're going to lose. You're going to lose weight and you're going to lose weight out of your wallet if you play this game. <laughs> All right, that's what I'm drinking. Iced tea. 
I was going to wear Chewbacca. Okay. I was reading that and I was going to go with Chupacabra. This is uh, Tullowit at 214. I was going to wear Chewbacca costume, but there was a Wookiee in line behind me at the costume who told me it would be cultural appropriation. I don't know why I read your things out loud. <laughs> it's a penalty that I must pay. Uh, it was very good. Yeah. Retro Pie Part 2 next week. I, it's so exciting. It is so fun. Oh, my gosh. I, I love those old retro games. Oh, oh okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I super scrolled. Hang on. I got to catch up. Got to find out where it was. I just said two, something like 14. There we go. <clears throat> All right. Costume shop. Yeah, my mother um, passed away four years ago, but for many, many years, she operated kind of a little private costume shop. And so that was one of the things that uh, I wound up with from her estate, many of the costume pieces. That's a lot of fun. <clears throat> You're late, Avanut. Oh, man, sorry you missed the 13 free raspberry pies. Another time. Oh, good luck, Matt. Uh, 20 minutes you're going to take it. Okay, so you're going to be at home, so you're going to hang out with here for another couple of minutes. You're nervous. Well, of course, we're all nervous before we take a test. Um, you scheduled the test, and you've been doing what it takes up till now. You knew when you scheduled the test what you had to do. Dude, you probably got this. Okay, The, the point of, of nervousness at this point is to sit back take a breath. You can't cram anymore in the next 20 minutes. That's going to make a difference in your life. So at this point, have an iced tea, chill out, catch a little bit of show or do whatever prep you need to do, do your meditation, uh, but just chill out until it's start time. Cause here we go. And you know what? You're going to be done with this about the time we're done with the show uh, or certainly while we're in discord. And so please uh, check in with us and let us know. And remember, you punch that last button, you reviewed all your questions, you hit the submit, and it says calculating your score. And what's it do? First of all, let me ask you 10 questions. Who paid for this? What study materials did you use? And you got to suffer through those stupid darn 10 survey questions. <clears throat> and then finally, they post, here's your passing score. You got 899 out of 900. So good luck, man. All right. Harry situation. Shame on you. Alan Duggan 216. Greetings, mi amigo. Thank you, Sky. That decidedly deserved a groan. <laughs> All right. Scott posted Discord links uh at 217. I uh, got a, a call from the boss this morning. He says, I want to join Discord. He may or may not make an appearance. This is Mike's partner, Dudley. Uh, our CEO. So uh, we got him a, a Discord account. We got him uh, an invite link, and he joined the unofficial Total Seminars Discord server. So maybe we'll see him today in costume, but if not, he's there, and that makes him accessible. You can just kick him off a message. Hey, Dudley, how about increasing the price of your products? Like We don't pay enough. <laughs> and he likes to get messages like that. <laughs> England first, Eddie is shark. Yep. Uh, who else? You said uh, England here too. Who else said England? I slid past them, no doubt. All right. Well, I apologize, whoever. Oh, so, okay. Essay for Matt Patrick. Thank you, Matthew Patrick. The other essay. Uh, I lived in an essay uh, up in the Middle East for a couple of years. A small island in the South Pacific, in the Pacific here, huh? Now you're South Pacific, dude. Catherine. Message retracted. Got it. I will respond to that at another time. <laughs> Dune, something about worms. Worms in sand and a guy named Paul. There's my spoiler. Catherine Tullowit. <laughs> okay, Catherine and Tullowit yakking it up between them. I will keep you there between yourselves. Oh, goodness. Oh, Abu Bakr's here. Abu Bakr al Haj, nice to see you, amigo. Shalom. Ah, shalom. Sorry about that. Salam alaikum. I'm not of the faith, but again, having lived there that long, I, I know all the greetings. <clears throat> Taking my security game in 20 minutes. So that was posted at 224. It's 229. Okay, so you still got 15 minutes. Relax. 
Whoa, glad you've been able to get the numbers down. Thank you. Just got done drinking some lemon iced tea too. Outstanding. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's not on a roll. That's that's all low hanging fruit. Tip the first one. Yes, you definitely got this, man. Good luck. Good. I want you to stop by. I can't wait to hear the results. I, I can't wait to hear the positive results. Uh, Joshua. Echevarria, nice to see you, amigo. Thought you would appreciate. I was able to get my Pi to host my CNC controller software on Raspbian. I was just reading about some new software to do exactly that. I grew up uh, in, in high school and pre-high school days working for relatives in machine shops. And in all their machine shops, all my relatives are doctors or <laughs> machinists. Uh, and they were all manual machines except one. My, the one uncle converted his to uh, CNC with DROs. And uh, so I, I had this driving interest. So that is just awesome that we can use a Pi in CNC control. Of course, everything is a lot more standardized today than it was back then. So it's much easier. It works great. Don't need to dedicate a large machine. Right. Man, that's, that's fantastic and a half. Oh, almost done here. Breathe, says Andrew Hutz. Keep cool. And remember, at the end of the day, it's just a test. Right. The worst thing can happen is you take it again. Cost you a couple of bucks, but if you do, you wind up kicking butt. But the best thing that happens is that great feeling you're going to have at the end of the day. Uh, almost done here. Almost caught up. Catherine talking to Matt. Me and you and a dog named Boo. <laughs> All right, so I'm trying to remember the artist on that one. I, I got the song clearly in my head. Who the heck did that? Not Bobby Darren. Me and you and a dog named Boo and I love you. Eh. All right, somebody will come up with it. All right, I'm caught up on those. Let me go see what's back in Uncle Notes. I'll be looking away from the camera for a second. What happens if I move it? Nah. It's not, not going to be long. I'm speeding through. So this week is uh, news, tricks, and traps. I call it traps. It's techniques. Announcements for the show. Okay. So let me share this one with you. So today is the costume party, and I want to put a, a little bit of time into this. I, I want as many participants as we can get uh, so we can have fun with it. And that's what it's all about. I want to have some fun with it. And I want you to get a nice prize, too, and I want you to have a chance to get a nice prize. So today, after the show, October 29th of the year 2021, where the unofficial Discord seminars channel, we've posted it a couple of times. I posted it at 150. Scott posted it, uh, I believe, at 207 uh, yeah, or 215, one of the two. Just check around. And we'll post it again before the show is done. Join us over on the unofficial Total Seminars Discord channel between 1545 and 1645, my time, 345 to 445. Central Daylight Time or 2045 to 2145 Universal Coordinated Time. Universal Team Coordinated. Yeah, Team Coordinated. Uh, it's a contest for best costume. No particular criteria. It's just the one that I like the best and the second that I like the best. So be creative, be original if you can. Do what you can, but you know, do what you think I will like because that's how I'm going to pick the winner. It's totally subjective, decided by me. There's no do-overs. There's no appeal process. First prize, Raspberry Pi kit. If we were able to ship it to you, if you're in any of the usual places where Amazon has presents, if not, we have a, a prize of equal value. And I got a couple more cool prizes. And even if they're international, they're sitting right here behind me. And I will personally internationally mail them from my house. I do know what the prizes will be because they're here. Total Seminars employees may not win prizes, but they must participate. Sorry, Scott, you cannot go to your uh, publisher's meeting tonight because we're doing the show. Hey, anything else that I got up here uh, that I can do this for you? Here, as I flip through these things, uh, pause your screen if you need them. There's the, uh, Scott posted the link to the Pi R Square server. Uh, there it is if you've lost it or if it's drifted off the chat. I already did contact information. We just did this announcement. <clears throat> These are the uh, friends of our show who have links. We're going to post those links. In fact, you guys can, uh, back channel, you guys can post these links anytime you want. And again, if you want to uh, see these things, I'm just going to read them off to you when I get to them uh, in my notes. But these are 
websites that people who participate in this show uh, post on a semi-regular basis. There's some really good stuff there. This is the project that I have uh, kind of borrowed from for today's show. Uh, the link, linoxide.com, best Linux performance monitoring tools. And you guys can post that. Unofficial Total Seminars Discord channel. There's the main link for today. Remember, these are case sensitive if you're typing them down off of here instead of copying them. I got the voucher stuff coming up. We'll save that one till later. Okay, I've gone through all my PDFs except the voucher stuff, the voucher winner, and I'll fill that in in a little while. <coughs> Pardon. Other news, uh, news, tricks, techniques of the week. Raspberry Pi uses an ARM-based Broadcom manufactured CPU or CPUs. And as you may know, NVIDIA has merged, bought, got bought. I don't know how all that business stuff works. But they merged with ARM. Of course, NVIDIA being the big video company and ARM being the big CPU design company, something good's got to come out of that, right? And so the founder of Raspberry Pi Outfit, the, the foundation and the trading company, uh, cut his teeth. Uh, on 3D video. And so that is a feature that's always been built in to the CPUs. And starting a, a couple of years ago, they started really working on that. And they've got a, a working implementation of Vulkan, the, the 3D renderer system. And then about a year ago, they had it working so well that it got blessed by the appropriate bodies who bless these things at the uh, the 1.0 level. And they've demonstrated some really cool things. You're watching some of the, the great 3D games that you play on Steam and so forth. Uh, they're playing them okay-ish using Vulkan on Raspberry Pis. Well, last week they announced that they have achieved the next level of certification for Vulkan functionality, 1.1, which doesn't sound like much, but it's huge. And what that means to us is number one, we get improved functionality in Vulkan 3D renderings, but that also translates to improved functionality in OpenGL, which Raspberry Pi OS has supported for a long, long time. So we're gonna see better, faster video throughput on Raspberry Pis. Uh, and in particular, this 1.1, certification level blessing uh, means that we're going to play much better using Raspberry Pi games that use uh, Unreal Engine 4. If you're into the game design or, or if you follow gaming, you understand all this stuff. Cool. Unreal is, is one of the great gaming engines out there. It makes all the, the really pretty smooth, gorgeous motion and actions. So this new Vulcan level of certification will improve performance on playing games that are run under Unreal Engine. That's pretty cool stuff. Uh, been a big news break this week from Raspberry Pi. There was a, a leak a couple of days ago. I managed to get my hands on it before they pulled the leak. But then uh, over the last two days, since everybody kind of knew about it, figured, figured out the same stuff I did, uh, they've sort of released the news. So there is a new Pi Zero in the farm and it goes something like this i should have grabbed a pi zero looks same it's the same size uh here's the the difference and what what's cool about old or what's different from old pi zero we're in our third generation of pi zeros uh and that includes whether or not it's wireless or has headers or doesn't have headers but here's the deal the chip on the first two generations of pi zero is a single core chip that has onboard 512 megs, a half a gig of RAM. And they were never able to extend the amount of RAM because whoever was making that chip and, or, and even specking it said, no, it's not practical to put more RAM on this chip. And there is no real estate left on the board to add another RAM chip. So what's been happening in the background is two things. They've come up with, the same chip that's used in the Pi 3B. Okay, so cool. That's a four-core chip. 
And second of all, they said, well, we don't have any real estate on there either to add more RAM, and we don't have any more real estate left on the board either. But what they did is they took another die, and on the chip, inside the chip, they stacked the die on top of the CPU die. So that's where the RAM is. It's still 512 megs, but basically you got a four core Raspberry Pi 3B with a half a gig of RAM. And otherwise it's almost everything that the 3B is and the price 15 bucks retail, 15 US. So this is gonna make really, really useful, powerful Pi zeros. You're gonna have small things that are totally Pi compliant. They're gonna work with the Raspberry Pi OS. Half a gig is fine for many, many, many kinds of installations. People are just, you know, I saw people on the pie hole forums in the last two days saying, oh man, that's awesome. Ridiculous. It, pie, uh, pie hole works fantastic on the old Pi Zeros, but we're going to be able to do things that if they don't suck up too much memory that could have been done on the Pi 3 that couldn't be done on the Zero now. So very exciting stuff. Lots and lots of news out there all over the web. That's as far as I'm going to carry it. Uh, let's see, we did that performance monitoring today. We're doing a short show. I talked about that. Big news. Big news. Of course, we're doing a voucher a little later on in the show. How are we doing here? It's 41. I'm going to get started in the next four or five minutes. Uh, resource server is up. There was no old unanswered questions. Yeah, okay. I did that. All right. So I'm in my notes all the way up to start this week's project. I'm going to go answer the rest of the questions that happened up while I was yammering there. And then we'll get started on today's project. We'll do the project. We'll do the, uh, the contest for the voucher. You're going to like the contest. It's a little fun, as mine are getting. And then we'll uh, shut down the show at, let me see, we started it at 2 o'clock my time, 3.30 my time. And then 15 minutes later, I'll get on on Discord and we'll start contesting uh, costuming there we go let's see it's 40 matt's about ready to start his test good luck matt if you still have half an ear on here reading questions i'm passing 232 as they say in klingon low hanging fruit tastes the sweetest and is best served cold hot fruit yeah okay maybe if it's in a cobbler no fruit on keto man i haven't had a fruit in two months I mean, this is it. Publishers can wait. Arr. Peter Hunt, send in the blog links. Yep, they're there. And YouTube channel links. Yes, <laughs> follow it. Maybe I can get more than 51 subscribers. I'm working to hit 55. Oh, guys, hit Tullowitz channel. Get his subscriber count up, please. That's great. Oh, I'm almost done. Almost caught up here. And maybe I can give this as Tullowit to have blogs to read in my spare time. So, so uh, Tullowit's blog is cool. They're all cool. Then they're all different. Tullowit's got a blog that shows slices of life in Hawaii, if I can use my own phrase there. Andrew's got his security and hacker oriented blog. And, you know, he hasn't been around for a while. We have to chase down Elbow. Elbow does reviews of inexpensive hardware and software on his. Let's see. Anybody? Okay. Nobody's posted those links. I'll, I'll post them real quick here. Stand by. There's links. Okay. Maybe they did. Maybe I just slid right past them. But here comes Andrew Hutz's blog. Enter. Here comes Tullowitz's blog. Okay. Uh, Scott says he posted them. I've started it. So just so they're all together, I'm doing them again. At whatever the current time is, it's 2.43 or so. Okay, there is Tullowitz posted, and here's Elbows. Control-C, Control-V, Enter. All right, so everything's posted. <clears throat> Save that change. Did that get me caught up? Yes, okay, all caught up at time 2.44. Oh, Peter Hunt's originally from the Caribbean. Very cool. Do you call it Caribbean or Caribbean? Caribbean, third syllable or Caribbean, second syllable? Let me know. I don't think I've ever pronounced it right. I've always pronounced it both ways. So I can punt, right? 
Okay, so today's project, we're going to do uh, some monitoring and measuring utilities. This article pointed out 31 of them. We're going to do uh, five less than that, 26. Uh, we pulled four of them out because they're graphical, and I just want to do command line ones. And then there's one of them that has a problem with Raspberry Pi OS. I, I worked with it, and I did the research on it. And you know, if you jump through enough hoops, you can make it work. But all the information that it provides is available through all the other utilities. So it's not worth the hassle in my mind. Again, we can do this on Raspberry Pi and Raspberry Pi OS. You can do this, almost all of these on other Linux distros. The, what makes them different is some Linux distros include the commands and utilities we're going to talk about, and some don't. The, the article writers, they used Ubuntu, and there are some of the things that are built into, baked into Ubuntu that aren't baked into Raspberry Pi OS. And I've done all the research on that. I've got it posted on my notes. Again, download my uh, my archive notes from pyrsquare.zapto.org and you can find out all the things. I'm going to uh, walk you, talk you through it. But again, I'm going to do it fairly concisely. So we'll do as many as time allows until we get to the voucher contest. Uh, I'm going to plan on going until about 20 after, then we'll do the contest and then do shutdown stuff. <clears throat> so if I don't get through them all, you can see the rest yourself, either from that article or use my notes because mine has uh, the notes that deal with uh, doing this on Raspberry Pi OS. Or if you're going to use it, uh, uh, try stuff on Ubuntu and an Ubuntu machine or Ubuntu VM, then so much the better because that was the article that it was written for. Let's see. Drawing my presentation from there. Um, I'm going to put this link in the, the tutorial link again in the stream in the YouTube chat. Control V link top 31 performance monitor commands can be found at that Linux Ode thing that was at time 1446 or 1447. I'm not looking at it real time. 46. How's that? Uh, the cool thing about the article is it shows screenshots of everything, but the cool thing about my presentation is it shows the real thing happening live, so that's even better. I'm using a Pi 3B Plus for a presentation. It works on all versions of Pi. The whole thing here is all about the operating system, and Raspberry Pi OS works on all Pis, of course. Uh, I could do this with an SSH connection. I can use the native client that's built into Windows SSH. I could download and use PuTTY, or you can open up a terminal, terminal session on your Raspberry Pi with a, a physical keyboard and monitor and then open up the terminal thing. Or the way I'm going to do it today, the fourth and effectively the same thing, is I will VNC over to Raspberry Pi and then open up a terminal session on there. So you can see my background happening graphically as well. Most monitoring and measuring commands utilities are run from the command line. And that's true in the real world, again, except for those handful of GUI based ones. The GUI based ones tend to be enterprise level. They watch multiple machines, not all of them, but some of them. So why do we want to monitor and measure performance? Eh, two reasons as, as I was thinking about it. And they're kind of one in the same one for individual troubleshooting, okay? There is something that makes me unhappy about my machine. Maybe it's not working at all, and so I've got to check things. Maybe it's working, but it's working slowly or poorly. So all of these utilities will give us insights into lots of different aspects of our machines. Of our machines. Remember, the troubleshooting process starts with identify the problem. My system is running slowly. My system is crashed. That's the problem. And then we gather information. We question what happened. Uh, when's the last time it worked? Did it ever work? Did anything happen to the machine? So those are questions that we can ask somebody who's had experience with this machine, hopefully before and after. Uh, but there's also gathering information like using these utilities to say, what's going on with my network interface card? What's going on with memory? How busy is my CPU? What's the temperature? Things like that. 
So that's part of gather information. And then once we've done those two steps, identify the problem, gather information, then we form a hypothesis and we can use utilities like we're gonna to use today as part of testing that hypothesis. My second reason, related to the first, but it's scaled up to the multi-user corporate level. So instead of, I'm trying to solve a problem on my computer here, I'm trying to solve a problem on a computer that impacts many people. It's a gateway machine. It's a web server that is, you know, is hosted to the world. It's a whatever, and it's got some kind of a problem. So I can use these utilities to gather information, help me form a hypothesis, and test it. <laughs> There's lots of other tools for doing these things. We're not doing them today, like log files, right? And there are log files. You can just read log files yourself. There are utilities that will aggregate and analyze log files. We'll do that stuff in another day. We're here to measure and monitor performance. So diving right in. Let me get things set up here. Sorry, I got an itchy nose. Blech. Oh, what do I need? VNC. Establish a connection with my Raspberry Pi password, R-A-S-P-B-E-R-R-Y. It came up. Let's share. I love sharing. It's caring. Not Karen, caring. All right. And then we bring up my notes so I can do. So I, this is really kind of weird. I was working on this the other night. And uh, it did this utility. And I said, well, wait a minute, why didn't they do that utility? So I wrote in, uh, we got to talk about that utility too. And then of course, way down there, there's the utility that they talked about and they forgot. So I had to go back and do a little bit of revamping. So the first one is a utility that's, all, that's built into almost every Linux distro that I know of. It's called top. You don't have to run it with sudo. You just type in top. And this gives us a summary of what's going on with RAM, CPU activity, program, quantity of programs running. And then here you can see it's updating in real time every second, every two seconds, whatever it is. Uh, here's the process ID of some program or process. Over here, VNC server plus is the name of the program. Who's operating it? Who's running the program? How much virtual memory is taken up? How much actual memory is taken up? How long has it been running? You get the idea. And you can change the headers on these. Uh, you can page up, page down. When you get done with this utility, you found out what you want to know, uh, you just use the Q, type in the letter Q, and it's done. And this is going to be really funky. I got to go back and forth between my notes. Oops, wrong thing. And that will be the most time consuming thing for most of these. What are you doing? Oh, you're such a goober. All right, top. Related is H top. I'll get into that in item number six. I don't know why they did that there. VM stat. So VM stat is a very good, it's virtual memory statistics. It's not built into the Raspberry Pi OS utility or operating system. Uh, it's a very quick install. All you have to do, I'm going to type the command and I'm not going to hit enter because every one of these things I installed when I was prepping these labs, make sure that I don't typo it here. Okay, I'll do it this way. I'll copy paste. There's a program out there. There is a, that is actually a collection of utilities and it's called SysStat, S-Y-S-S-T-A-T. -S and so a lot of the utilities that we're gonna use here today and demonstrate will get installed because you install sysstat. So I want to encourage you to do that. You can do sudo apt install sysstat, uh, or you can do it the way CompTIA wants us to do it, the older way, sudo apt-get install sysstat. And once that's done, we quit out of that. Then let's take a look at the first utility that the authors of this article said we ought to take a look at. Okay, it's called vmstat. Oh, by the way, my article uh, shows you all of the different steps that you have to do to install this on different versions. If you're going to do it on a Debian, or if you're going to do it on an Arch, or if you're going to do it on some other Linux distro. So to run that first utility, it's called VMstat. This one we want to run with sudo, sudo VMstat. And 
that was quick and painless because that's all it does. It just gives you statistics about virtual memory in there. I don't understand all of this stuff. Uh, if you are a programmer, if you are a, a configure, if you're a Linux guru, this will have great value to you. For me, it has a little bit of value. I understand some of it, how much of it of my virtual memory is free. Let's see, 30 megs of free. That doesn't seem like a lot, but when we're talking about caching and virtual memory, that is. And particularly since we got 32 megs, 29 of which are free, doing okay on this machine. All right, next. That was VM stat, good utility. IO stat also came with SysStat. Let me go down here. And I got how to install it on Debian and Ubuntu and CentOS and Arhel and Fedora and Rocky and older versions of CentOS and Arhel and on Arch. Eh. All right. So it's run sudo iostat. And this shows me not IO of physical, uh, of network interface cards. This shows me the input output activity of my storage devices. So SDA and MMC blocks, these are storage devices in the installed in this computer. That's all I have is just a real simple one. Man, you guys are honking up a storm on the uh, on Discord. I'm, I'm looking forward to get there, but my, if you hear it wonking on my machine, I apologize. It's, it's necessary to keep the volume level where I have it. So you may just hear that. Sorry. All right, IOSTAT. Shows me input activities, kilobits read per second, Kilobits per second written and on, on multiple different things, transactions per second. Good stuff. What's this? Oh, Pac Man. So there's another top. We've done regular top so far. Now we're going to do IO top. And in order to do IO top, you have to install. Pac-Man. It's sudo apt or apt-get install Pac-Man on some systems and it's install, uh, I'm sorry, it's iotop on others. On Debian and Ubuntu's, we would say sudo, oops, always do that. There we go. Sudo apt or apt-get install iotop. And brrr, it's a very quick install, 30 seconds or so. And now we run sudo iotop. Really? Oh, stop it. I mixed my notes here and, and I tried to pull it out of my head here. Sysdat arch, sudo pacman, arch linux sudo vm stat. Oh, I went all the way up there. Sorry, that's what happened. Sorry. <clears throat> A glitch in the matrix. On Arch Linux, display disk and input outputs. And we did that. So the next is HTOP. I, I include HTOP in all of the systems that I set up for others, like when I'm setting up a, a classroom server. <clears throat> Beg your pardon. And it's built into Raspberry Pi OS right now, but if you're using another OS, sudo apt install htop. htop is kind of like top, except I think we can run that without sudo htop. There's a lot more things that you can do with it. I can control setup. I can search for uh, process IDs, user accounts, names of programs. I can see it in a tree-like function with F5. I'm not going to demo all this to you. I'm here to introduce to you the the programs that are cool to use for this kind of stuff. I want you to experiment with it. You can F10 to quit over here, or you can use the letter Q. I do like this part. This is a four core CPU. So it's showing me activity on core one, core two, core three, and core four. Here's my total memory in usage and, and free, my swap memory setup, running 69 tasks how long the system's been up. I must've rebooted this 22 hours ago. Oh yeah, I always do that to get ready for the show. You get the idea. Okay, cue to quit. 
So we've done top, we've done IO top, we've done H top. There's a few more tops to go. The free command, that's built into most versions of Linux. Don't need sudo. Shows you free memory stats. Again, so these are some of the overlap things that we can do. <clears throat> but that's a nice quickie. Why am I, why is my system so slow? What, I have five, 400 processes running. Is there any free RAM left? Oh yeah, there's 30 megs left or 30 gigs, whatever it might be. Simple, straightforward utility. Uh, so you can see a lot of these utilities show how long the system has been up and running. But if you don't want to go wade through all those utilities, there's a nice little command that's built into, uh, on, as far as I know, all Linux distros, uptime. Current time is 1,500 hours. It's been up for 22 hours and 31 minutes. There have been two users on it, and the average load has been pretty low. Yeah, because it basically sits here and does nothing until I'm working on it to create presentations and labs. SAR is a utility that gets installed when we install the sysstat package. So sudo apt install sysstat. You've already done that, hopefully. <clears throat> And there's tons and tons of switches here. I'm just gonna show you one or two. And one thing that had to change in order for this to work. So I'm gonna do SAR space minus capital A. And I get tons of information, detailed information about what's going on on my CPUs individually and all of them. Come here, you. If you run this right after you install sysstat, it won't work. Uh, you're going to get an error message, and our our authors of the article that I borrowed this from didn't document that. Don't know why. So I've got it documented what you need to do in my handy-dandy little notes. Hey, look at all that. Uh, what's going on with TCP and sockets? <clears throat> what was that? System calls, bad calls, packets per second, UDP per second, TCP per second. A lot, a lot of information in here. And if you install this and run that command and make the fix that I'm going to tell you about uh, right away, you're not going to see anything. It's got to run for a little while. We've completely run out of space on here to get it all. So you, in order to see all this information, you might want to do something like run your command and then pipe it to some file name. You can do a whole path, you could do it here, and then you can go read that file with cat or nano or something like that, vim or vi if you hate yourself. <laughs> uh, but let me tell you about the fix ever so briefly here. You have to enable data logging. You're going to get an error the first time you run this that says check that data collecting is enabled. And what you have to do, it's in my notes. Don't try to memorize it from here. Uh, you edit a file, and I'll show you how to do that. We're going to sudo. <sighs> Sorry, I, I whack Etsy. There it is. Right, let me copy paste this here because it's easier. So let me go over here, sudo nano, and then we'll paste in the path. So there's a file called sysstat and a folder called default and a folder called Etsy. And all you have to do is change this one line. It currently by default says enabled equals false. You change it to enabled equals true, save the file, and then SAR will work. Control X, there we go. How are we doing here? It's three minutes past, we're doing good. We're gonna make it. Buzz, 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 grind, grind, grind. Oh yeah, there's another set of SAR practice commands. All right, Mike has mentioned this a million times. I've mentioned it many times. When you capture packets for Wireshark or something like that, you need the thing, the engine that actually captures the packets. In Windows, we use one kind of packet capture utility. In Linux, we use another one. And it's called TCP dump. 
and it's not included in Raspberry Pi OS. So let me show you how to get TCP dump installed. It's very simple. Come over here, let's clear this, right click print or cut paste. And you'll say sudo apt install TCP dump. You can just hit the enter key there and it'll say, hey, it's gonna take up this much space. You wanna do it, yes or no, click yes. Or you can pre-feed it with the minus Y. On my Pi 3B, it took 25 seconds to install. And then once it's installed, this is really cool. This is real time uh, on screen capture of your network interface cards. It's totally cool. And what you have to do is specify which, if any, that you want to uh, capture from. So it goes something like this, sudo TCP dump minus I to specify the interface, eth zero. I'll use my ethernet zero card. When I hit the enter key, it's just gonna do that forever. So, okay, if you can read it that fast, more power to you. I'm gonna control C to stop it. And the usual way to do this would be to save this to a file. Again, the same way we would have done that SAR command. Oops, not clear, up arrow. There we go. Direct the output to a file. Capture dot text. And when you're done capturing enough, you control C to stop it and it's all saved. All right. So now you could take that capture and feed it into a protocol analyzer like Wireshark or one of the other competitive products for them. Wireshark is definitely the king of the, the roost when it comes to that kind of monitoring. SS, network statistics built into most Linux distros. So we're gonna say SS minus AT. And that's gonna show me all ports. This is kind of like NetStat. In fact, this is the, what is ultimately the replacement for NetStat. NetStat still has its time and its place, but it's being deprecated and this is its replacement. And a little clearer, a little easier to understand. How are we doing here? I know it's getting a little boring. Uh, if you only wanted to say, oh, by the way, that was AT, all TCP sockets. You can do SS minus AU, all UDP sockets. Heck, let's just do it. SS minus AU. There we go. That was exciting. Oh, what the heck did I just do there? Oh, I don't want that. I certainly don't want that. That's weird. Eh, whatever. <clears throat> Check out my notes here. How about a simple way to list your open file built into all Linux boxes? I can't get this file. It says it's locked or something like that. So we can find that out with a built-in command list open files it's all one word i got lots of open files going on in here so that helps me determine if somebody can't get to a file because it's open or if it's not in here then so what's the file you're having trouble with fred uh i don't know let me see how about let's pick one here locale archive locale dash archive so I wanna see the same thing. And this time I'm gonna pipe it through grep. Show me any lines that have the term locale archive. I typed it wrong somehow, somewhere. Maybe I need the whole thing. Oh, well, lists open files. Like I said, I'm not a guru on every one of these. Uh, hopefully you all know this one. We used to use ifconfig to find out what's going on with our configured interfaces. That has been replaced by the IP command. And you got to run it with flags. So if I want to see, for instance, uh, all my network interface configurations, it's IPA or IP minus A. Similar information, a little different format than ifconfig. We have talked about 
IF config and IP many, many times in these presentations. Uh, and you can see there's a ton more stuff that you can do with IP. We're just measuring and monitoring here. Uh, you can also try the IP route command. Heck, let's just do it, IP route. And this shows the router table that's in this computer. Wait a minute, I thought only routers had router tables. Nope, computers have them too. You'll find them in Windows machines and you'll find them in Linux machines and Mac machines and every other kind of machine that's network supportive. Uh, processes. I wanna know what processes are running. Command is built into all Linux distros. A for all, capital A. <clears throat> now in this case, the minus E and the minus A generate the same thing. How about PS minus minus help? <clears throat> you can use this to find out process ID numbers. You can get a simple output, you can get extended outputs <clears throat> and you can always do man uh, space PS or lots more information or lots better presented information. MP stat. So that's processor related statistics. We've seen some utilities that'll do that. Should be built into most utilities. It is built into, oh, let me see which switch they wanna demo on here. I think it's minus A. Yeah. MP stat. Minus capital A. So the this looks terrible because the width of my uh, terminal screen here isn't wide enough, so it it's wrapped. But all of these headers: CPU, HIs per second, timers per second. Your CPU has tons of timers built in it. Network transmissions per second, and so forth. Uh, those will all turn up on one line if you widen out this view a little more. And you can see that going on for each of your functioning CPU cores. Good programmer stuff. Good to know. You know, I, I saw a report this week. Uh, a user reported that one of his cores in a multi-core system failed. All right, PMAP. Folks, you got to be a programmer to know or care about this one. But let me show you PMAP without anything. It's built in. This is, nope, you got to use uh, utilities. So what I want to do is I want to know the memory map of a particular program that's running. And I got to know it by process ID. So I'll use some program to find out the process ID of something. Maybe I'll use top. It's old. It's original. Uh, VNC server is running in here. I had one in mind. Let me see in the notes I made on this. Give me a second. Let's see, memory map of press IDs, volume command. And I said, which one? Oh, LX terminal. I see LX panel, LX terminal. Okay. So LX terminal. Oh, it changed process IDs because I rebooted, but that's all right. <sighs> so LX terminal is using process ID three. I lost you. There it is. 3552. So we'll quit out of here and we're going to do a process ID, PMAP, minus D, display the output of process ID 3552. <clears throat> and again, you got to be a programmer to care about this stuff. Here's all the programs and sub programs that are running as part of that, the memory addresses that they occupy and where they start from. And, you know, it just gets deep and heavy. If I were going to do a sci-fi set, I would run PMAP in the background in a continuous loop and, and other programs like that. It's kind of cool. <clears throat> Almost done. More than halfway. The monitor command is an open source utility. It's not built in. Uh, we're going to do this one unto its own. Uh, it, it's huge. So all I'm going to do is just tell you how to install it. It's real simple, sudo apt or sudo apt-get install monit. And there's tons and tons of information in there. And, the real, and one of the really nice things about it 
is the information is available from the command line or when it's running, you can get it from a web server or from a web browser. Network resource monitoring tool, Munin. Again, this is one of the four that we're skipping because they're graphical. Uh, number 18, collect L, C-O-L-L-E-C-T-L. My notes show you how to install this. Installation time, a minute and a half. Yeah, not even gonna cover the thing. And finally, Zabbix, it's, it's graphical. And then the last graphical, Zabbix is system monitoring software. It's good for single systems. It's good for multiple systems and is one of the most powerful and popular monitoring tools out there along with its buddy, Cacti, which is item number 21. How are we doing here? It's quarter after, five more minutes, cool. Uh, and Cacti is used for monitoring SNMP systems. Oh, can't forget Nagios, Stacer, I'm not doing. You can read the notes there. That takes a little bit to get installed. IP Traff, I played with that one the other day. That one's kind of cool. IP Traffic, it's another IP network monitoring tool. <clears throat> not built into RPI OS. It's a 20 second install. And let me throw it up on the screen. Ah, I can just type it. Apt install IP Traff. Sudo apt install IP Traff. I think there's two apps in that. Nope, there's one. All right, and then once it's installed, you give it a run. Don't need sudo, IP traff. Oh, stop it. I ran this thing all over the place the other day. What are you doing? Reading my notes here. No, Linux side says run the program with IP traff. I did IP traff, but then I must have made some notes that says doesn't know, IP traff is not built in. Install it with. Uh, 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 uh. I don't remember. I must have rebooted and lost something. Sorry about that. That's all right. We got plenty more to work with. Uh, how about another top command? A top. It's another ASCII full screen performance tool monitor. Tracks CPUs memory, disks, network performance, not included. It's a 25 second install, sudo apt install ATOP. So let's run it, ATOP. Kind of like HTOP and kind of like TOP, a little different organization, a little different memory, cue to get out. Yeah, there's an A, not a Q. <clears throat> That's number 25 out of 31, six to go here. There's an IF top for interfaces. I don't need to show that to you. Glances, that's one. No, that works. Okay, glances is, is interesting. I want you to see that. It's a three and a half minute install. Pseudo apt install glances, G-L-A-N-C-E-S. And then run it without pseudo. Ah, this isn't the one I was thinking of. It's nice. It's graphical. It, it's, it's a much tighter summary of larger systems and subsystems than top and H top and A top and so forth. So I got CPU memory, swap file information here, network information on all my network interface cards, interface devices, critical file systems, and the temperature sensor. And you can update this and, and have it do other things. Q to get out. You getting the feeling there's a pattern there? Because there is. Uh, there's a system call tracer called S trace. <clears throat> and what you do with S trace is you use it to track calls made by programs when you run them. So for instance, if I say S trace on the command LS, I can see all the things that LS called in the system in order to function. So LS isn't some self-contained little thing. It calls FS stat utilities and read commands in, this, in the uh, 
kernel and lots, lots more. So strace will show you the internal processes that get called for, traces them, it tracks them when you run a particular program. That's a neat thing. That's how you learn about the internals of Linux. Nmod, another performance monitoring tool, not built into RPI, sudo apt install nmon nmon, run it without sudo. Okay, this is an interesting one. So you gotta say, what system do I want to use? And what you wanna do is keep the H command in mind because you can't get back to this menu without quitting the utility. So for instance, if the first thing I wanna do is see CPU activity in lowercase, I'll type the letter C and please wait, gathering information. Okay, there we go. Now to see those commands again, I've got to do H and it's gonna show them to me in a little different format, but there they all are. Uh, anything interesting here? How about network, lowercase n? Yeah. Oh, H to remove this, sorry. H and then N. Okay, there it is. So, it's, And you can make these tabs open and close. I can get rid of the CPU one by typing the letter C. I can get rid of the network ones. Oh, I forgot the commands, H for help. You get the idea. And then when you're done, let's put CPU activity and network back up again. There we go. Q to get out. <clears throat> That's a cool utility. I really enjoyed when I learned about that one. I didn't know about it before I started playing here. There's a very interesting utility called SysDig. Uh, it's a long install and it's the one that, is this the one that chokes? No. Okay, it installs the usual way, sudo apt install SysDig. And what's the time on that one? That, that was a five minute install. It's got two hang times. Uh, it stops at 31% for a while, stops at 79% for a while. But once it's installed, we run that one with sudo. Uh-huh. Oh, and this is the one that chokes on Raspberry Pi. I did. I went through all the hoops to give it a test yesterday, uh, but it's just not worth sharing it with you. Uh, we talked about PS, processes. You can monitor processes by user or by account. Not built in, it's a simple install, sudo apt install ACCT. And then you run the command with sudo AC. Total time of activity by all users has been 2,700 hours on this system. And then you can break it down by individual users. For instance, oh, it's, hang on, what happened today? And then breakdowns by users, minus D and minus P, pseudo AC, daily breakdowns. And I don't know why they break these down into fours and twos and twos and ones, but whatever. Might have been four different users that I used on the seventh. And I only used two user accounts on the eighth and one on the 12th. You get the idea. And then the other one is let's see the users who are occupying time here by user and then by username. So let's try minus P. I like this utility. <laughs> There's only one user on this system. And you can also do this by sudo AC and then the username. If y'all wanna see how much time Fred's been spending on the system, because he says he's been logged in for 13 hours a day. So I'd say sudo AC and a valid username there. <clears throat> His total time has been 2,700 hours. <laughs> Well, yeah. Plus the other hundreds of servers that I have running in here. Almost done. It's 23. That's absolutely perfect. We're on item number 31 out of 31. Uh, not built in. It's called NetHogs, command line utility. It's kind of like top command used to monitor network traffic. Uh, and it monitors, this one's different than all the other ones, network bandwidth by process in real time. You install it with sudo apt install nethogs and then run it with sudo, sudo nethogs. So I've only got two processes here going on as far as this thing is concerned right now. 
roots run in VNC server and it's sent 7.1. Oh, this is per second. Kilobits per second, kilobytes per second, KB. So useful if you're running a whole bunch of active programs. Q to escape, like all top programs. All right, I'm done with that. I know it was long, it was a little boring. I needed a short show that I could do. I have a short show that I did. Let me close things out here so I can start a contest and then I'll check questions till the end of the day. Sure you want to disconnect? Yes, I am sure I want to disconnect. <clears throat> I need contest information and I need to see things. Okay, gonna do a contest. We're gonna do a contest for a CompTIA voucher. It's gonna be as fair as I can make it. We're gonna do another random number contest. We will be using binary, <clears throat> but it's not one that you can have your calculator up real quick uh, and you know cheat or game the system. Hang on, I got stuff going on here on my system that I got to see. There we go. So I used a random number generator today and generated a random number in advance. I got it here in my notes, not in the notes that you can download. <laughs> Yours said bank. So the rules of this thing are today, you're going to win a voucher. Somebody's going to win a voucher that's good for any CompT exam except CYSA. When we announce the winner, you're going to send an email to me. And the, the contents of the email that we've been talking about changed. They changed this morning. I, I became the, the, the new secretary for this thing. And I got in touch with the CompTIA people. And they said, oh, good. Glad we got somebody new. Here's the changes. So I will pass that on to you as we go. When I get the information that I need from you, I will send them weekly. Okay. So one that I get today, if you get it to me today, it'll go out today. Uh, with the other two winners that Mike had this week. If not, it's not going to go to CompTIA until next Friday. They want me to send them three winners every week on Friday. So be ready to send me an email today. I'll give you the contact information on that and the info that you got to send. And then once they get it, I don't know what happens, how long it takes. I, they changed people today as well. And the one person that was doing it said they got a little bit behind and they passed off uh, all of their lists to other people. That person sent me some information that said, I need more info for this person and this person and this person. So for a week or so, we're going to play catch up and then hopefully get back in real time. We make this as fair as possible. When the winner turns up on my screen, on my YouTube chat, that's how we pick the winner. If you see your name pop up first as, the, as a winning value before me, that's because the internet. <laughs> Blame the internet. Let's see. I'm human. I make mistakes. If I do make a mistake and call the wrong winner, that's the winner. No do-overs, no appeals. So I used a pseudo random number generator. I generated a number between zero and 255. Okay. In binary, that's zero, 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 eight zeros through one, 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 eight ones. When you give your answer, you're going to give it to me in binary and it must have eight digits, include leaning zeros if that's part of your number that you're going to guess. All right, so I pick a number, but your, here's your contest. You're going to pick a number between zero and 255 inclusive. The winner will be the closest to the number that my random number generator generated. You can be, you can match the number, you can be closest to less than, or you can be closest to greater than. That's a different rule for today. <clears throat> I'll select a winner, and I will tell you what to do with that. So you may begin any time. Give me an eight-digit binary number that's your guess. If you want to add the decimal number beside it, cool beans. But otherwise, I'll just watch and figure it out. Closest to the actual number, closest to... <clears throat> Less than, closest to, greater than is going to be our winner today. We got a good count today. We got 19 people right now. Uh, all of you should be playing. Look at people just pass. Thank you. Yes, previous winners cannot win again. They know that. The eye belongs in trash. I don't see one binary number yet. I see a decimal. Thank you, Scott, for decimal 42. Here we go. Abu Bakr Al-Hajj has thrown in a number. Okay, there's a decimal and binary from Matthew and Patricia. 
Uh, Sonny and Mango, you're missing leading zeros, amigo. Uh, Thomas Cole's got an eight-digit number there. Catherine's got eight digits, including decimal. Let's see. Okay. Uh, Joey Quetzal, missing leading zeros, amigo. Uh, try it again. I'll let you do it. If you, if you put it in wrong, you may have a second attempt. Uh, a second bite at the apple. But otherwise, only put in one. Okay, Thomas Cole looking good here. Steady as Sharks got a number in there. David Zintero's got a number. <clears throat> Is that everybody? All right. I'm going to type in my number that I had <clears throat> in binary. One, two, three. Okay, there it is in binary, and I'll put the decimal value in parentheses. <clears throat> okay, so from the time my post comes up, that is the last one that we're going to accept. I'll give you 10 more seconds. <clears throat> Joe, you have resubmitted. That's cool. Sunny and Mango, did you resubmit? If not, resubmit with eight values. <laughs> Follow it. Such a <laughs> very nice. Okay, here we go. I'm hitting the enter key. My number was decimal 21, which is 0, 0, 0, 101001. So <clears throat> I saw a 60 in here, which I believe is the, the lowest one, David Zintera. So anybody else with two leading zeros <clears throat> or yeah. Okay. Scott is in agreement with me. David Zentera, you have won a CompTIA voucher. So let me post up on here. Well, I'm, I'm going to do two posts. I'm going to do one on the, uh, the YouTube chat feed, and then I'm going to post, come here, you, a slide. Show notes, winner. Sorry, I should have had this all queued up while we were getting ready to go. Okay, voucher winner. All right, posting now on the YouTube feed. <clears throat> there it goes. It doesn't, you know, there's, there's no spaces. So copy and paste this, David Zintera. So you'll have everything that you need to do. And I'm going to put the slide up and I'm going to talk about the slide and then we're going to close things down so everybody can get ready to go to costume party, fancy dress party, fancy dress ball, share screen, click this. So there's new information here. <clears throat> You're going to send the email to me at my Total Seminars address, davear at totalsem.com. Identify the YouTube name that you use today, David Zintera. And if that's not your actual name, your actual first name and your last name. If you have signed up with CompTIA in the past, use the same exact name that you have used to take tests for them. So your name, I need your email address. Again, the one that you've used with CompTIA in the past, uh, and it, or if you've never won a CompTIA, then whichever one you want to use in the future. Uh, and that's got to be in the body of the email. I can't extract the one from the header. Tell me the country where you intend to take the exam and two more pieces of information that they've added now. Which exam voucher you want to take? They're no longer issuing. It's a block blank voucher. They want to know. And then finally, if you are in the United States, you must include the state where you're going to take the exam. Okay, so if you're already registered with CompTIA, use the same name and email that you use to register under. Give me your real name, your real email address in the body of the email, country where you're going to take the exam, and the state, if it's in the U.S., which exam you're going to take, and send that to Dave R. all one word, no spaces, at totalsem.com. Hey, folks, that's it. Short show today. Huzzah. In about 15 minutes, I will come on to YouTube feed and I'm sorry, YouTube. I will perhaps go to the Discord feed 
and we'll start costume partying. I need a couple minutes to get my costume ready and a couple other goodies. So as always, many thanks to uh, Scott Jernigan and Andrew Hutz and of course, Mike Myers for giving us this time to get together and uh, join and do these contests and learn some stuff. I am Dave Rush. I'm the senior instructor at Total Seminars and resident pie specialist. I wish you a great weekend. Take care of each other. Take serious steps to stay healthy. Call or visit your parents and family and never forget, technology is great, but the greatest resource we have are you and I. So good night. I'll see you on Discord and again at the AMA next week. And until then, I am out of here.